Hello and welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and another edition of our series Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management Dynamics A to Z. Today we're on the letter K. We're cheating a little bit. K is for keys. I did a short vote on LinkedIn for what key we should do today's topic on and we chose item allocation keys. I'm going to discuss three use cases for item allocation keys in Dynamics. The first one has existed even in legacy versions of Dynamics here under inventory management setup and forecast. We have something called item allocation keys. Easy ways to group products that are forecasted together. Think aggregate forecasts. So if I look at my Lego parts item allocation key, you can see I have a bunch of different Lego item numbers or SKUs in that group, in that product family, and I can assign a percentage to them. That percentage allows me to do a forecast at the item allocation key level and have it create requirements broken out by those percentages. For example, if we go ahead into the master planning module, I have created supply forecast lines or a purchase plan for that item allocation key rather than specify an item. And as far as forward facing forecasts or future date forecasts, sort by my date here, next month we have 20,000, the month after that we have 25,000. Taking that into account and going back to my item allocation key. We can see those percentages. Item 193 has 20%, so 20% 20 of 20,000, 20% of 25,000. It should segregate out those forecast requirements based on these percentages. So I'll navigate over to that item and we'll take a look at some forms to confirm that information. We'll go to the gross requirement. This is different from net requirements, and it truly is just forecast. What are forecasted plans? Gross requirements. It doesn't take into account any other type of demand. It doesn't take into account supply. Look at Warehouse 24. We actually do have two planned production orders that match that, that are pegged to those forecasted requirements. So 4,000 units, 20% of 20,000 for April. 5,000 units, 20% of 25,000 for May. That's the first use case is planning, doing forecasting at that aggregate level. The second use case is actually the supply schedule form, something we've talked a lot about here on Dynamics Unplugged. But the supply schedule allows you to look at inventory outlooks or plants and starting and ending inventory projections at that item family level rather than just at the SKU level, which is really powerful when it comes to doing SNOP planning and reporting for your organization. So we can see here for all of the Lego information, I could have a period starting and ending inventory, and that's going to help me with inventory turns. That's going to help me with budgeting. It's going to help me with a lot of different things, especially if our company already operates at that item family or business unit level. So supply schedule is really use case number two. The third way somewhat related to the first way is demand forecasting. And I showed how to apply a supply forecast and use those percentages to have an aggregate forecast, but in demand forecasting, if we're using the statistical forecasting measure-based tool in D365, we must assign items to item allocation keys. The only way to generate a forecast based on historical data is to assign them to item allocation keys. Under demand forecasting in the master planning module is where you will also see that item allocation keys module. So it's not just in the inventory management module anymore. At the time of forecast generation, when using the statistical modeling, these percentages are actually ignored. What those item allocation keys are really used for in statistical modeling and forecasting is grouping items with 
similar trends together. And also when setting up our parameters, because we might have items that are planned differently, we override at the item allocation key level. If we're using something like the statistical forecast to generate a forecast for different types of items, some are purchased, some are produced, some have seasonality, some don't, some have heavy scrap rates, some are driven by projects. If we have like a retail side of the business or a construction side of the business or something that relies heavily on projects versus maybe the more discrete manufacturing and process manufacturing type business we have, we could have different parameters. So your item allocation keys allow you to define how you set up demand forecasting just for that product. If the item is not assigned to an item allocation key, no demand forecast would be generated. So there you have it, item allocation keys, three use cases for the letter K in D365, Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z. We will see you next time for the letter L.